This is ground zero of the roller coaster wars. On this empty patch of dirt, a crack team of engineers hopes to conquer the record books and build the coaster that rules them all. But it'll take a mountain of steel and technological wizardry to pull it off. This is about bragging rights. For all its thrills, an amusement park signature coaster is the one that counts. It is these monuments of pure power and speed that draw the big crowds. If all goes to plan, they'll launch King the Car in one year. It's a tall order, at 45 stories high, and accelerating from zero to 206 kilometers per hour in three and a half seconds. This ride will be the closest you'll get to getting shot off the deck of an aircraft carrier, or pulling out of a dive in an F-16. So we've got to bring a crane in. But are the designers behind King Dakar pushing the technology to the breaking point? The track record for this new breed of rocket coasters is littered with mechanical problems. Will it be safe? Is it worth a $25 million risk? In the hyper-competitive world of amusement parks, you bet it is. When you tell the public that the tallest roller coaster is in your park, people who aren't interested in roller coasters or parks are going to take notice and they're going to be curious and they're going to want to go to the park to even just look at it, even if they don't ride it. In the last decade, the roller coaster wars have escalated. 61 meter mega coasters have been around for years. But in the spring of 2000, Cedar Point Amusement Park in Ohio threw down the gauntlet. Breaking through the 91 meter height ceiling with Millennium Force, the first Giga Coaster. For speed freaks, the watershed moment came in 1996 with Superman, the escape at Magic Mountain, California, shattering the 161 kilometers per hour barrier. Up until 10 years ago, all roller coasters operated on a simple propulsion formula. A slow chain or cable lift pulls the train up the first hill, releases it, and gravity takes over. Rocket coasters such as King Dakar have rewritten the laws of coaster physics, throwing out the idea of the slow ride up the first hill. Rocket coasters are shot out of the starting gate like a fighter jet is launched off an aircraft carrier. The shuttle or catch car inside the track is locked into place like a coiled spring. The coaster is loaded onto it and cocked like the hammer of a gun. They pull the trigger and boom, away you go. Simple, not really. At least not at speeds in excess of 161 kilometers per hour, and not if you're the chief engineer, but we'll come back to that. In 2003, a new rocket coaster shocked the industry, taking launch technology to another level and shattering two world records. Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point, Ohio, stands a gut-wrenching 128 meters high, making it the first strata coaster, accelerating to 193 kilometers per hour in about four seconds. It's the closest thing on wheels to a real top fuel dragster. Enter King Dakar, the monster ride destined to cut top thrill dragster down to size. March 2004, the Brain Trust from Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey teams with Swiss manufacturer Intamin, the builders of top thrill dragster. The concept for King Dakar is unveiled. It looks like it's all here. Great. The idea is to begin with the blueprint of Top Thrill Dragster, but to build their new coaster, King the Car, even bigger, faster, and better. Uh, the amount of power for this ride is substantial. The stakes are higher, much higher. The question is, how far can they push the technology? Can it be done? Can it be done in time? 
The money people are adamant. To be worth the estimated $25 million investment, it has to be ready to ride for the start of the next season. Turning to one of the most sophisticated CAD design software programs around, the idea begins to take form. Every meter further and kilometer per hour quicker drives up the cost. Every change in the geometry of the track affects the stress on the rider's body. The formulas for G-forces must be recalculated. The design goes through hundreds of minor variations. We talked about different heights. You know, how high did we want to go? We looked at the possibility of one with two hills on it in the back. And, you know, we decided to stay with uh, the single hill. The final design is a 950-meter-long track. Packing the maximum thrills into the park's allocated space, its centerpiece will be this soaring 139-meter tower, four-fifths as tall as the Washington Monument, breaking the old record by 11 meters. The designers can even experience the ride from the passenger's point of view. First the launch at 0 to 206 kilometers per hour in 3.5 seconds. You are shot up the tower faster than you can say, get me off this thing. Coming up to the top, we're going to slow you down real nice for that nice look around and the next thing you know you're going to be diving at the ground. It's probably impossible to describe how this would feel to the average person who has never been in a jet fighter or maybe a motorcycle. But even that is no comparison. This will pin you in your seat. It's nothing like you ever felt before. King Dakar goes into production under a cloak of seats. If one of the other super parks were to find out about their plans and steal their thunder by launching an even taller, faster coaster, King Dakar would be a huge waste of cash. In this business, second isn't an option. August 2004. An A-list of engineers converges on the east coast of the United States, daring to build the dream coaster. As they begin digging the foundation, their deadline is set. April 23, 2005. They have less than a year, and the clock is ticking. So far, so good. If they fail, Six Flags will lose money by the bucket. Because of the magnitude of the project, we had to get an earlier start than we typically do for other coasters. One crew works on building the giant tower while a second crew works on the smaller Camel Hump Hill, approximately 45 meters away. They take advantage of the warm fall weather to get as much of the coaster's track done as possible. By November, the coaster is beginning to take shape. The plan is to work non-stop seven days a week, even during the winter months. But just when they're making progress, a severe rainstorm shuts them down. Little do they realize that this is just an omen. There is much worse to come. It is now late November, and the brutal storm that has shut down construction of the world's tallest, fastest roller coaster shows no signs of letting up. The deadline of launching King Dakar next spring is in serious jeopardy. Every day the rain falls is like watching thousands of dollars go down the drain. One crew is supposed to be working on the mammoth 139 meter tower that stands half done. The other team is trying to finish the 39 meter high Camel Hump Hill. But work is at a complete standstill. We've been pushing hard to complete the tower as early as possible so that we can avoid days like this for any of the high work. As you can see, there's nothing going on in the air. It's rainy and windy. At these extreme heights, the danger from the heavy rain and winds is magnified. Moving around on dripping wet steel is inviting a fatal slip. The delicate task of maneuvering heavy sections of track into place is out of the question. Down on the ground, the picture isn't getting any prettier. 
the rain has flooded the foundation of a hydraulic room that will house the coaster's launch system, the heart and soul of the ride. The crew has extra work to do, pumping the water out. The clock is ticking, and it seems the hole just gets deeper and deeper. Finally, after a lengthy setback, the storm abates. The crews will now have to work overtime to try and claw back the lost time. Mother Nature's not been very kind to us. We've had problems, we've had a lot of rain, we've had a lot of wind. Yesterday we had fog so bad we couldn't see the top of the tower from the bottom. The cold's not so bad, but the wind is killing us. We're behind where we want to be, but we're, we're working hard to, to get caught up. A few weeks later, it appears their frantic pace has paid off. The 950 meter long track is taking shape. They're nearly halfway there. The team is about to achieve an important milestone. The topping off of the Camelback, the second highest point on the coaster. This 39 meter hill is designed to give riders a last burst of airtime, lifting them in their seats as they crest the camel back and head for the finish. Its completion gives the crew a boost in morale, but they know they are a long way from the finish line. Looming in the background is a reminder of bigger challenges to come. The completion of the record-breaking 139 meter tower. If they're to have any hope of finishing the project on schedule, they need to top off this main tower by year's end. Time for a reality check. There are now only 20 shopping days to Christmas, and the crews break for the holidays. They have more than 30 meters to go. Every meter higher, the more difficult the task becomes. Right now, with days like today, it's a bit in question, honestly. We're going to keep pushing hard to make that happen, uh, give everyone an early Christmas present, but uh, it's going to be tight, really tight. Then, almost on cue, Mother Nature intercedes. A wicked winter storm blows in. Temperatures and the spirit of the crew plummet. The wind chill is 26 below zero. The force of the winds is too strong, grounding the cranes. Once again, progress on the main tower is frozen. They have no option but to wait out the storm. Throughout December, work on the tower moves in fits and starts. The storm eases. They rush to the cranes and attempt to secure another piece of track in place. Then the winds pick up, and the vicious circle begins again. It's a frustrating, expensive process. Anytime we have a hiccup or a slowdown in the field, it's a lot, a lot of money and time wasted. As they move their way up to the 120 meter mark, they are in hallowed roller coaster airspace. Only top thrill dragster at 128 meters stands between them and the record. Engineering at this altitude is extreme. There is one silver lining. The unfinished structure is standing solid against the full force of the storms. Not too far from the New Jersey coast, King Dakar has to be built to withstand hurricane force over 160 km per hour winds. For extra reinforcement, there are catwalks that serve as lateral braces in the arch of the tower. As the workers look down from their perch at 121 meters, the magnitude of the project begins to sink in. In spite of the setbacks, they are now only one rung in the ladder away from topping it off. Now only two shopping days until Christmas. There is hope. They schedule the topping off of the tower for the last week of the year. Once that last piece is bolted into place, King Dakar will take the title of the tallest roller coaster in the world. But the New Year's celebration isn't to be. Another cold front moves in and the crews are sent home for a bittersweet holiday. The only thing that is clear about King Dakar's schedule is that making their April deadline to launch the ride will be an uphill battle. And every centimeter of progress will be hard earned. We've been trying to get it topped out for 
a little while now, and uh, the weather has been pushing us back between wind and rain and fog. We've been uh, having a rough go of it. The topping off will have to wait until the new year. When it finally happens, it'll be the crowning moment in coaster history. If the final arching piece of track is even a centimeter off on either side, the tower will have to be reconfigured. With the eyes of the media and coaster fans watching, will this, the most important piece of the puzzle, be a perfect fit? The hopes of the engineers and the fate of King Dakar hang in the balance. Engineers are working overtime, trying to top off the soaring 139-meter record-breaking tower of King Dakar. Oh, we're going to make the top first. And capture the title of the tallest roller coaster on Earth. It's now mid-January 2005. A horrible run of winter storms has delayed this critical event by nearly a month. Today, the engineers are determined to make it happen, no matter what the weather. The crowd gathers early in the morning. The media has been invited in force. Cameras and eyes are trained on the top of the structure to witness this historic moment when King Dakar is crowned the king of the coasters. Unfortunately, there's a new dilemma. Fog is looming all around the top of the tower. The crew can't believe their bad luck. This is a delicate operation, and visibility for the crane operator is essential. Will the engineers have to send everyone home and reschedule yet again? They decide to go for it, hoping the fog will lift just long enough to fit the final piece in place. The crane team concentrate on what they call the pick. When they lift the crowning piece of steel track, it must be at a precise angle and level. It's a long way up. And the choreography must be perfect. So when we set the, the top piece on, we may have to push those track pieces out just a little bit to allow us to fit in properly. We can go very quickly or it may take up to upwards of an hour or two, depending on how difficult it is to, to fit the, the, the piece in. Almost on cue, the fog breaks, and there's a clear view of the top of the 45-story tower. Finally, it's time for liftoff. They make the pick. Everyone watches and waits. The fit must be exact. It is a game of centimeters. After all the weather setbacks and delays, the record-breaking tower is finally complete. It's an historic day for the engineers and entire crew at Six Flags. They picked it quickly, they set it in, and they were able to make it up very, very quickly. Much faster than I thought. I actually thought it would take a lot longer. But there's no time to celebrate. It's now only three months to the scheduled opening. The crew shift into overdrive to finish off the track and begin testing the coaster. But their luck is fleeting. Their nemesis has returned with a vengeance. Another bitter storm blows in and dumps over half a meter of snow on the job site. Instead of firing up the cranes, workers fire up the snow plows Another day goes to waste. 
While the track work on the fastest coaster on Earth is going painfully slow, there is good news at the base of the main tower. Inside this hydraulics building, the parts for the launch system are arriving as scheduled. It's like a late Christmas for the mechanics, as they begin piecing together the components to the most powerful hydraulic launch system in roller coaster history. Building the highest coaster in the world is a huge challenge, but the real catch is breaking the speed record. That's enough. Zero to 206 in 3.5 seconds is no joke. Unleashing this awesome power is a hydraulic launch system more massive than anything of its kind in the coaster world. 12,500 horsepower in a single blast and more than 12 times the horsepower of a Formula One race car. The launch system is basically a high-tech catapult and when it's all put together, it works like this. At the starting gate, the train of roller coaster cars are loaded and locked onto this red shuttle called the catch car, which is pulled along the track on a cable. The hydraulics are what powers the cable. When the operator pushes the launch button, there is no turning back. The hydraulics spring into action. 18,927 litres of hydraulic fluid is forced through a series of motors. The motors spin a giant drum. That rapidly winds the cable, pulling the coaster down the track and up to the top of the tower. The engineers like to think of the hydraulic system that powers the launch like a big squirt gun. I like to think of it sort of like the, the world's biggest super soaker system. Um, a super soaker works when you, you pump the handle and you put high pressure air into that little tank and you pull the trigger and the air blasts the water out. With a price tag of about five million bucks, that's one expensive super soaker. After a few weeks of tinkering, the launch system resembles a giant spider. Massive hoses sprawl out of the drum and motors and connect to the hydraulic fluid reservoirs. It's slow going, but if they don't get every connection right the first time, they'll have to take it apart and start again. They are still awaiting the delivery of the most important component of the hydraulic system the massive accumulator tanks that are the heart of the ride. Pumping the hydraulic fluid through the motor that supercharges the coaster to record-breaking acceleration. Accumulators are like the heart of the rides. It's kind of like the way a heart pushes the blood around through the body. The accumulator pushes the hydraulic fluid through the motor so we can get the launch up to speed. Got it? That's good. The mechanics are getting nervous. They should have come two days ago but the trucks are running behind schedule because of the heavy snowstorm. But on the third day, their luck turns. The trucks carrying the accumulator tanks have arrived. The hydraulics are about to get a serious power boost. But first, they have to get them inside. Each of the four accumulator tanks weigh 18,143 kilograms. They'll have to be hoisted out of the trucks by crane. One false move, one break in the connection could send the accumulator to a premature death. It would be a fatal blow to King the car. The accumulators take a year to make. There are no spares. It takes all day, but at last, the accumulator tanks are in place. And the countdown to the most powerful roller coaster launch in history has begun. I've never dealt with a hydraulic system like this. But deal with it they will. In trying to eke out every last drop of acceleration, they must ensure that every last component of the launch system, the track, and the cars can handle the stress. 
every part has a breaking point, a fact of engineering that might come back to haunt them when they least expect. With the accumulators in place, they're poised to begin the next phase, the test launch of King Dakar. It's one thing to build it, but will it work? Will the biggest, fastest roller coaster on Earth clear the final hurdle? February 15, 2005. In spite of one of the most severe winters in the history of the eastern United States, the crew building King the Car, the world's tallest, fastest roller coaster, have finally bolted the last piece of track into place. But the delays have come at a cost. They're over budget and weeks behind schedule. Opening day, April 23rd, is fast approaching. At this point in the project, we're a little bit behind where I, where I plan to be. Um, we're, we're working a second shift mechanical right now to try and, and get ourselves back on track. That means getting the trains loaded onto the track. As the crane lifts each individual car into place, and the crew guides the wheels onto the steel track, welders must shear down part of the track so the base of the train can slip over it. Every wheel has to be fine-tuned to glide perfectly along the rail. They quickly move on to the next phase, installing 473 magnetic brakes along the track. When you're dealing with speeds of 206 kilometers per hour, you need a fail-safe method to control that speed. Top to bottom, every joint and cross tie has to be a perfect fit. Every centimeter of track must be inspected to make sure there is clearance on all sides for the train and passengers to pass through safely. The engineers are preparing to conduct a pull-through test. Building a lightweight fixture out of wood to simulate the exact dimensions of a train car with the passenger's arms fully extended. The catch is, they have to manually pull it around the entire track. Checking the clearance on the lower parts of the track is easy, but the 139 meter tower is an entirely different story. They come up with an approach that has never been attempted before. Check the guys up on there. Just take us up, drop us off with our fixture. There we go. The crane delivers engineers and the fixture to the top of the tower. They must tie themselves securely to the track and move carefully. They're 139 meters off the ground with no safety net. The goes up, they go up. One wrong move or one misstep could be fatal. Let's take a few moments here. Good. Okay, so it's running by itself now, right? Okay. Far so good. A few minutes into the test, they hit potential trouble. So how was the clearance? We're about actually a half inch. About a half an inch? Yeah, uh, three quarters. Three All quarters right. of an inch. The plywood extension that simulates a rider's arm appears to be about two and a half centimeters over the line at the top of the tower. Yeah, we got about two inches. In this business, a centimeter or two is huge. It could mean rebuilding this section of the track. Two inches over the top of it. It's not over the side, though. They re-measure on the spot. It turns out their plywood arm is a few centimeters longer than the required safety envelope. A false alarm, but the delay is costly.
If they don't finish the test before dark, they'll have to start all over again, from the top down tomorrow morning. Ten hours later, and the light fading fast, the engineers are back on solid ground. The track is all clear. Every little test like this, or big test like this, is one step closer to, to opening it. With computer and system checks complete, it's finally time to launch the train. So you'll see that train roll backwards just a little bit. And then they'll know it's there. Launch, okay. Engineers have been waiting for this day for more than a year. It's time to see if their hard work will pay off. There's always a little bit of apprehension until the, the first train gets all the way around the track to make sure there aren't any mechanical interferences. They conduct their first launches at night, so they don't interrupt construction work around the launch area. They begin launching the train at slow speeds, easing their way up to 206 kilometers per hour. By three in the morning, they're ready to try launching at full speed. It'll be a huge victory if it makes it over the top on the first full powered run. The train now has to move the catch car back and forth to be an automatic position. There's a problem. At full power, the train does not clear the tower. They recalculate, adjust the launch settings, and try again. They work through the night. With the sun beginning to rise, they think they've cracked it. Yep, we're ready. The engineers boost the hydraulic power, reset the computer and load up the coaster for one last try. If it doesn't make it over the top this time, it could mean serious problems with the hydraulic system. Okay, Michael, get it right this time. finally clears the tower. They're ready to move to the next phase, launching a train full of test dummies. Okay, is the plan to run the loaded one out and launch it too? The plastic dummies are filled with water to simulate the weight of 18 passengers. The hydraulic launch system is straining to propel the empty trains up and over the top of the tower. Now they have to step up the power surge to push the heavier load over the top. Will it be enough? Set and try again. It's not looking good. The hydraulics seem to be okay. Suspecting the problem is in the catch car, they call it a nut. The following day, they call in the specialist. Uh, 
catch car isn't coming back so I don't know if they've been in Vanu or whatever. A few hours later, they're ready to try again. Ready to launch, how about you, Jeff? I'm there. It's a last ditch effort. If this doesn't work, the catch car will have to be replaced. The whole season could be lost. It's a success. After more than a year of planning and construction, the ride finally appears to be working smoothly. Their victory is short-lived. After repeated test launches, an inspection revealed that the launch cable is already wearing out. The engineers are forced to stop the test launches less than two weeks before the scheduled opening. After all this work to get it up and running, patience is now wearing thin. If they don't get their green light, then we'll come down and figure out what's going on. The public unveiling of King Dakar is pushed back by nearly a month, but that is the least of their worries. If they don't figure it out fast, they may have to put the brakes on altogether. The whole summer season is in jeopardy. April 23rd, 2005. It was meant to be the grand opening of King Dakar, but the world's tallest, fastest roller coaster is going nowhere fast. Unfortunately, the engineers are still tinkering with the complex cable launch system that is supposed to catapult the roller coaster out of the gate at 206 kilometers per hour and up and over the 139 meter high tower. Night after night, they fire off unmanned test launches to try and work the problem out. We have some cable tension issues. We don't want that to happen on this. We've got to keep a proper amount of tension on the cable. They decide to replace the entire cable that catapults the train at record-breaking speeds up to the top of the tower. The next night, they fire up the most powerful hydraulic launch system of its kind and hope for the best. If they can work out the kinks, these same engineers who built King the Car from the ground up will get to ride her first. But until they get the kinks out, the only passengers they can risk are the water dummies. Oh, the water dummies were fantastic, uh, fantastic riders. They didn't talk back. They, uh, they were a little quiet. We were looking for a little more response out of them, but uh, no surprises from them. The water dummy launches go smoothly. The engineers move on to testing the coaster at full capacity. Running multiple trains in succession and hoping the new cable doesn't start to slip. We've got to continue cycling it. We want to prove it out, get rid of any nuisance issues, we call it, um, so that it runs consistently when it's ready to open to the public. We're testing all the different safety devices to make sure that everything that we need to monitor is being monitored and verifying that those are all working. Once we've done that and checked the system response, then we'll be ready to put people on it. We're getting there. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Four weeks and nearly 600 hours of test runs later, King Dakar is declared sound. It's a month late, but even still, a remarkable feat of engineering. Ten months after breaking ground, the king of all roller coasters is finally ready for its first real passengers. The engineers who built it. Even for the team who put her together, piece by piece, being the first to ride King Dakar is a daunting prospect. We've gone over everything twice, we've verified it, and everything is good to go. This ride might turn your hair gray. All right. 
Lap number one. After months of back-breaking deadlines and sleepless nights, they're finally about to make history. Yeah, we're gonna be down there, and then there, and then back here, and over there. That is it. That nails it. The launch. 0 to 206. 3.5 seconds. Straight up the tower. 139 meters. The drop. 127 meters sheer vertical. 50 seconds. And three records bite the dust. The most insane 50 seconds of your life. King Dakar takes the title of the biggest, fastest roller coaster on Earth. Uh, it's worth waiting for. It's a 50-second reward after nearly a year of hard labor. Oh, outstanding. That is, uh, the acceleration just keeps going and going. It just doesn't want to stop. And then straight up. You try to wow. talk and you can't yeah. talk. <laughs> <laughs> Part is at the top when you come down that spiral. Look at the twist right at the ground. Yeah. Look at the view, hanging nice. The brakes work good. Spiral. Come over there and you look at just this much track in front of you, and you're still screaming along. It's a momentous day for the engineers and in coaster history. It's been a long road to the top. I thought this project was going to be quite a challenge, and, and it, it's been an enormous amount of hard work and reward. It certainly lived up to all the uh, expectations I had for, uh, for a challenging project. Everybody, please count down with me to help launch the tallest and the fastest roller coaster on Earth, King Dakar. King Dakar finally opens to the public just one week later. Coaster enthusiasts from around the world clamor to be the first to ride the record-breaking coaster. Dakar's moment of glory is short-lived. A few weeks after the grand opening, the ride comes to a screeching halt. According to Six Flags, a bolt in the track sheared off during an unmanned test launch, ripping out a piece of plastic liner and damaging the brakes on the train. Almost two months, the entire area around King of the Car is sealed off. The trains sit idly while rumors circulate about the demise of King of the Car. Will the greatest coaster on earth be back? In early August, the announcement finally comes. King of the Car is fixed. Engineers order and install larger custom made bolts from the coaster's manufacturer to keep the line that's inside the launch truck in coming weeks. This time, there is no grand opening. Just a sigh of relief. The team behind the car have learned the cold truth. If you want to be the champ, you can expect to take some hard knocks on the way to the top. The question is, how long will the reign of King the Car last? I'd be very excited for this to hold both records, tallest and fastest for a long time, but there's always someone looking to, to break that and we'll look to get it back if we're not able to keep it. Only a few years ago, when 161 kilometers an hour and 121 meters seemed insane, with the rise of this mega structure, there is no doubt someone out there is already plotting to build the next super coaster. In the escalating coaster wars, there's no such thing as too high or too fast. But for now, 
king of the car is the new king of the hill.